All right, guys, welcome back to the shack. And a lot of you have been asking me, Clack, what's under the cloth? Well, today we're going to get to the bottom of that. So if you want to see the latest machine here in the shop, stick around and we'll be right back. All right, guys, so here it is once and for all. This is the machine that you guys have all been waiting on, and I'm gonna move the camera over so you can get a better look at it. All right, guys, so before we get down and we actually look what's under the hood here, I just wanna introduce you to Adam Stack's latest enclosed diode laser. That's right, Adam Stack is now moving into the enclosed diode market. Uh, this machine is called the Craft. It is their latest iteration of enclosed diode, but there's a little extra kicker to it, guys. This module that's on here is a 20 watt blue diode, but it also has a 1.2 watt uh, IR built into it. And I know what you're thinking, guys, that's, that's so tired, everybody's done it. You know, so what, big deal. But there's one catch, this is one unique feature that when Adam Stack mentioned this machine to me, I had to try it out. And that is the fact that not only can you do blue diode or IR, but you can do blue IR all together. So that's something that is really, I've never seen before. So we're gonna talk about that, but I'm gonna get my little camera down and walk you around the machine and just show you some of the features on it. Cause I wanna try to keep this to be more of a short introduction to the machine to just let you know what it's all about. So let's grab the camera and get started on that. All right guys, so as you can tell, this machine is pretty well put together. It does have a nice large window across the top here where you can see inside the enclosure. It's got the orange tint to it, which you know we like here at the shack. Uh, the chassis is metal. There's not any plastic on this. The only plastic is gonna be the acrylic up here. Pretty substantial as far as the build of the machine. Now, I will tell you uh, that does, however, make it a little heavier as far as being portable. So this is not gonna be what I would consider to be highly portable it can be moved it's actually moved really easy uh, with two people uh, if it's one person you're going to need to be careful because it's a little cumbersome it's, it's kind of big uh, the machine is sporting a approximately a 12 by 20 work area more specifically it is because i can't remember it 500 millimeters by 320 millimeters the machine does come with this honeycomb the honeycomb has some type of a coating on it uh, it looks like it's black instead of the traditional silver. And so far it's staying remarkably clean. I, you can't really tell I've used it even though I've used it quite a bit uh, with this machine. The head, there's the, uh, the module. It is, like I said, a 1.2 watt 1064 and a 20 watt blue diode. Uh, this machine does come equipped with autofocus. Uh, for you guys that like it, it also has the little crosshair. In Adam Stack software, you can choose whether to use the red crosshair or the blue pointer to laser, which I prefer the blue pointer. I use that in light burn and set it up. Uh, as you can see, it's got plenty of lighting uh, inside the cabinet here. Uh, it does use these rounded rails. The drive chain on this system, or drive train, I guess I should say, the drive train on this system is remarkably like that of the A70s. Uh, if you've got an A70, it looks like they're, they've borrowed a lot of the, the same technology, maybe even some of the same parts uh, to put this thing together. You do have a small, like a PC fan back here in the back. It's not going to be the most powerful fan uh, if you're using a air purifier or if you're using another fan. That would probably be a good idea. Uh, I would even, you know, go as so far. If you've got to go a long way, you may want to remove this and just, uh, you know, go with a, a higher CFM fan. So that's, that's not going to be really powerful. But if you're not going very far, it, it does do the job. The bottom of the machine, one thing that they did do is they did incorporate a little bit of airflow for this machine to be able to get rid of the smoke inside. So there is that underneath here. This is a metal crumb tray. Like I said, I've added me some magnets as kind of spacers and you know, try to help hold my honeycomb in place. That's just kind of a personal preference on my part. I will tell you that the buttons do work. It will pause the job and then restart the job. Uh, if you open this, 
Uh, you will have to turn that off if you want to leave this lid open when you're framing. You're going to have to turn that setting off in their software. It does come equipped with a camera. Camera is very similar to the one that I like for machines. It gives you a good wide view. You can see the entire work area. And so far, it's, you know, it's not 100%, but it's very accurate for what I use it for. This machine, I will tell you, comes with an external air assist, similar to some of the other competitors brands. Uh, you have a, an adjustment here where you can adjust the flow, but it is automatic through Lightburn or through Atomstack software, uh, Atomstack Studio. It's also automatic there. Uh, it, they did incorporate this new USB key over here. Uh, you have some other ports that you can connect such things to as the accessories. Uh, there are uh, rotaries as well as a bed slider extension that you can get with this machine. You also have this fire safety connector here uh, as well as air assist. And then you have a hose under here where the air actually comes in from this pump right here. Uh, this thing also has a place here that you can put water in. Uh, if you're worried about fire and you want to use this, and I'll probably never get that pushed back in there correctly, you can actually set this machine up to where it has sensors and if it senses a fire, it activates uh, basically the air assist here. It has an extra input right there. That controls the water pump inside this air assist. And so that, that water pump will kick on. If you run the cable from here where it says fire suppress safety to here and you put water in here, it will spray water through the air assist nozzle onto the workpiece and put out a fire. Me personally, under my circumstances, I choose not to run that. So I haven't tested that to see how well it works. Maybe, maybe one day. Uh, but so far, like I said, the exhaust port, one thing that I do think that they did pretty good on is the exhaust port comes out the side over here. A lot of machines this size like to come around to the back and put the air port coming out for the exhaust. They like to put it back here on the back. Well, with a machine this size, that causes problems because now you can't put it up against the wall where, you know, most of us normal people like to put these big machines against the wall instead of out in the middle of a room. So by not having the port on the back, that requires only about 24 inches from front to back because you literally, with the lack of any kind of connectors or anything back here, you literally can back this thing all the way up against the wall. You may have to get to it for some of these adjustment screws and so forth back here, uh, but not likely. Uh, you will see that the, the way that you adjust the belts, there are some external screws that sometimes you may need to get back here to get through. But so far, mine came well adjusted and I haven't had to do anything to it. So let's get moving to what the machine can do and uh, we'll kind of wrap this thing up real quick. All right, guys, so as I said earlier, the machine, it has a, about a 12 by 20 work area. So a lot of your leatherettes, acrylics, and stuff like that, you're gonna get in the 12 by 20 uh, work area. Now keep in mind, this is a blue and an IR. So if you're wanting to do clear acrylics, this is not gonna be what you're gonna wanna look at. Uh, black acrylics, red, maybe some greens, uh, you should be able to do okay. Uh, leatherettes. Uh, things like Lone Star adhesives and stuff like that. Things that you can do with a blue 20 watt uh, laser, I think you would, you would have no problems at all with this machine. That's all the big things, but I want to point out to you one more thing because I think this is the most unique feature of this machine and is that is how this dual beam works. Uh, how do you operate it? How do you activate it? And so let's kind of go over to the machine. I'm going to show you a couple of different ways and talk about that. All right, guys, so first of all, the little button right here, this blue, you can see right here where it says blue diode or infrared. With this button, all you really have to do to change it, say if you're using light burn, you just hit the button. It's gonna change it to red. Okay, currently that's infrared. So we just went from a blue laser to infrared. You hit it again, it's gonna turn purple. Okay, now you're doing the combined beam, uh, blue diode, combined with infrared. So you've got both beams activated at the exact same time. So hit it again, goes back to blue. Like I said, you can just toggle them this way. Uh, another thing with the machine, I don't wanna do it without any material in here. Let me put some material underneath it so I don't break anything. 
uh, is this autofocus button here. When you got material underneath the laser, you can hit the button. You'll notice that the head will go to the top, find the top, and it comes back down and it focuses. So I'm gonna hit it one more time just so you can see the whole process. It's gonna go up, find the top of the axis is movement, go back down and focus on the material. So far it has been very, very accurate and I've had really good results with it and we're gonna go over some of those results right now. I'm gonna go over a few things about the settings with the machine. Now, first off, this is a 20 watt diode, okay? This is not a 70 watt, it's not a 60 watt CO2, it's a 20 watt diode. So cutting, although it will do cutting, and some people would say that the 20 watt is kind of the sweet spot right now as far as power output. Me personally, I kind of lean into the 30 for what I do because I do a lot of cutting. So if you, know, if you don't do a lot of cutting, I can see where the 20 would be a better suited uh, machine. But I will say for engraving, uh, the machine's doing a really good job engraving. Uh, this uh, was actually done at like 127 LPI. Uh, the settings that I'm running, I'm running around 200 millimeters a second on the engrave. So it's relatively fast. Uh, these are just some little images. This is one of the images. I did this one with Atomstack Studio, and that's one of their little stock images that they have in there. That's another thing with this machine is it, Atomstack Studio is real similar to some of the other basic softwares for running the machine. So if you don't want to get light burn right away and you want to kind of stick with something fairly simple and you don't have a preference, uh, you can run their Atomstack Studio. Of course, you're going to have to have it anyway to do firmware updates and kind of things like that. That's not very uncommon. Uh, a lot of machines have their own proprietary software, but with this machine, you do have the op option of running Lightburn without having to buy a different license. And also with this machine so far, I have not lost any functionality with Lightburn because some of the other machines, when you get them, there's functions built into them that I couldn't get to work uh, other than with their software. So far with this one, switching the diode as far as the, the beam uh, type is done using macros. Autofocus is done using macros. The camera works as is with only one USB cable. So they've mastered that instead of having to have the two USB cables. So, so far the transition over to Lightburn has been really, really smooth with this machine. It was just as easy as with the X40 that I run or my A70. So there's that. So there's a turkey, uh, like I said, did that one. Cut this out, I'm running two passes at about six millimeters a second to get that clean cut. Uh, this is just some material I had laying around. And for those of you that don't know, there's my buddy Steve over at Ventari's Workshop, it's his logo there. Uh, if you're not a fan or you don't watch Steve, go check out his channel, hit that thumbs up, subscribe, and tell him that the Clack Shack sent you. And also, just while we're talking about Steve, I made this cool little Sasquatch crossing sign. Uh, this, this I made for Steve. Uh, many of you may know Steve is quite a large guy. We think he's part Sasquatch. So uh, that's for you, Steve. I used the IR, did a little bit of anodized materials. I will tell you, if you're going to do these anodized materials with the speeds and the air assist on, make sure you have it where it's not going to move. Uh, I did have some of these cards. The air assist is really powerful if you forget to turn it down. Uh, so you're going to want to tape that steel or use a jig or something to make sure that these things don't slide on that honeycomb because I have one that slid pretty bad on me uh, because of the air assist blowing on it and everything. This is another one I did in Atomstack Studio, their software. I used it to do this turtle. Uh, this is one of their stock little download files. There's a section in their software where you can go in there and download basically ready-made files for your laser and that's pretty cool especially if you're new and you're just getting into it and maybe you don't know how to design the files or you haven't taken the time to sit down and learn the software it's good to do and of course this is one of the more detailed images that i have around the shop so i like to use it as kind of a, a test of what a machine is capable of and as you can see that's a really good definition uh haven't done a lot of photos with this machine but when i saw the results from that i was like i bet this machine would really do good on photos so I broke out my old benchmark Clack Shack uh, 1984. Yes, that's the Clack Shack 1984, guys. Yes, that is a uh, that is a like a little vest. <laughs> hey, my parents made me wear it. It was the it was the 80s, guys. It was the 80s, but it done a really good job. And that was actually just kind of taking some settings from an engrave test and throwing them in there. So did a little engrave on this material. This is kind of like a basswood, maybe like a three, four millimeter basswood. Like I said, got good variation of 
color throughout the, the whole power spectrum. So, All right, so as I said, engraving is gonna be the strong suit. That's where this thing is, seems to be showing out at, is engraving. And doing cutting, you will, with a 10, millim with a 10 watt output, you will have to uh, make some accommodations for thicker materials. This is some birch material that's kind of hard. Uh, it's 4.5, 4.7 millimeters thick. And as you can see, I'm having to run three passes, but at three passes, I am able to drop this stuff with six millimeters a second. That's typically what I run with most 20 watt machines. It's gonna be around six to seven millimeters a second with three passes. If it's a softer material, maybe you can get by with eight, but typically six is the safe spot to, to go. All right, when you get down to this stuff, this is a little thicker than three millimeters, but you get down to this, you're gonna start running about 12 and a half uh, millimeters a second with two passes. Or if you wanna slow it down and try to do a single, you can do 8.3 millimeters uh, with one pass and get through it. So if you're cutting material quarter inch and below, I'm gonna say six millimeters is gonna be the sweet spot as far as the speed and just adjust your, uh, your, your passes from there. Now, with the IR capability, guys, there are things that you can do such as metals. Now, I'm gonna need to do a little more testing but I will tell you that I'm getting some pretty good results on some stainless steel as far as the shading goes. Uh, it's, it's doing a really good job of giving me some dark grays and almost blacks on here. I haven't played around with a whole lot of color, but I don't know if you can tell it. There's a little bit of blues and purple showing out right there, uh, but it does mark metal also. Now, like I said, it's a 1.2 watt. So if you're wanting to do something really huge that you're actually trying to mark the metal, probably not the best machine for that because it's gonna take a while. But if you're wanting to mark some small stuff, do anodized materials uh, with the IR module, especially anodized tags, anodized dog tags, business cards, those type things, you're gonna be able to run some substantial speeds and still get that white look on that black material. So that's what the IR, uh, in my opinion, would be most useful for, is for those anodized material things, not necessarily marking, material, marking metals. So there's a lot of companies out there that are combining blue diodes to make an even more powerful blue diode, but it was kind of cool when I heard Adam Stack had taken and combined an IR in with the blue and you could run them at the same time. I thought that was very unique. Uh, like I said, I'm still, I'm still coming up with ways that that's going to benefit you, but I think at the, the, the least benefit is going to be the fact that when you're trying to mark metals, you can use the blue to kind of bring a little more heat uh, to it and kind of emphasize that engrave a little more than if you were just using the 1.2 or 1.5 or 2 watt IR that most of the machines come with. So there you go guys. It's basically everything you need to get started engraving in one machine. Uh, Adam Stack has been known, I've seen the machines here in my shop over the past few years. Uh, I've had Adam Stack machines in here for two, almost three years now and I like the machines, but this is the first time they've actually taken a diode machine with a usable work area and put it enclosed. Uh, and so far, everything works on it. It's got these nice little, almost like cabinet style hinges on the lid. I mean, the metal handle on the door. So really, seriously, the only plastic really on the exterior of this is the acrylic cover. And it seems, to be, it seems to be doing a good job of blocking the blue light because I had to turn the frame in power up a little bit to be able to see it through here because that blue dot, you know, it will just filter it out and you can't see it. So there you go, guys. Decent machine, especially if you're a beginner just getting into it. I think this one would bring a lot to the table for you uh, and definitely worth giving a look at. All right, guys, that's about it for this video. I want to thank Adam Stack for sending the machine out. I love being able to test these machines, see what they're made of, and see what the latest innovations in lasers are. It has been a very competitive uh, arena over the past year or so with different companies trying to over-innovate other ones. I am happy to see Adam Stack has not given up, and they're coming out with the dual beam laser. That's pretty cool, and I think that the more companies push each other, the better products we're going to get here uh, as the consumer in the long run. So I'm going to put that link down below, guys. Go check that out. If you want to get one, feel free to use that link for your purchase or any other Atom Stack purchase for that matter to let them know that the Shack sent you. And that way they'll continue to send me the stuff to try out and give you guys an honest review and my preliminary findings of these machines as they come out. So until next time, be safe and have a good day.